In this video, I'll be showing you how you can automate your entire lead generation process so you can have automated email campaigns and get results such as these ones. The best thing is you can do it completely for free and at scale, this costs me less than $50 a month. In a minute, I'll be teaching you the fundamentals of lead generation and then I will also share the exact steps and automations that I'm using to generate over hundreds of leads every month. And as promised, all of the workflows will be inside the descriptions. These are easy to use templates so you can just import them and then have it all set up and running for your own company in less than 30 minutes. My definition of lead generation is that it's the process of identifying and connecting with potential buyers. And especially for sales driven companies, this is the lifeblood. The goal is to get as many, but at the same time, as qualified people into the sales pipeline to make sure that the maximum amount of these actually turn into paying customers. However, especially in these days where it's extremely competitive, most people fail at lead generation. The reasons are that it's usually too manually, meaning they can't do it at scale because they have to do everything by hand. The second reason is that it's too generic. They are not able to personalize their outreach to every individual prospect. Their lead generation is also irrelevant oftentimes because they are not reaching out to the right people that have a need right now. And it's also often built on quality data, right? So they are not able to reach out properly to these people and have bad trigger signals. That's why it's important to focus on the four pillars of modern day lead generation. The first pillar is precision targeting. So it's very important that you do not just blast emails, the so-called spray and pray, but it's very important that you get clear on who you're trying to reach out to. The second is the data advantage. So it's very important that you put an emphasis on high quality data because bad data destroys your sending reputation on the email side. And also if you do not find the contact data of leads, you cannot even reach out to them. It's also very important that you automate your outreach, right? Because you have to be consistent and outbound and you need a system that sends personalized messages at scale also while you sleep. Another very important pillar often overlooked is relevant and timely messaging. There needs to be intent and the leads should need your offer right now. So you shouldn't just send it to everyone. Today's strategy is about reaching out to people that currently, so meaning it's timely and relevant, have an issue with our competitor. So it's a precision targeting. It's not targeting everyone. It's targeting people that already are using a solution similar to ours. You're reaching out to them as soon as they complain on a platform called G2, especially in the software industry, a tool which is for reviews, but you can also use things like Google review, you can use Trustpilot or Captera. So this means it's automated because as soon as there is something, we are going to reach out to them. We reach out to these prospects through cold emailing and we really need to make sure that we are playing on the data advantage, meaning that we reach out to more people and that we can reach them also in a better way. Here's a quick overview of the agent. As you can see, we're using N at N and the main goal is to identify leads that currently or recently struggled with our competitor solution or service. Our agent is able to identify what exactly these prospects didn't like about our competitors and then it's able to reach out with a personalized pitch and also allow us to convert them to our customers. We are actually starting in a Google Sheet. So as you can see here, the Google Sheet is connected to our agent. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to put in the competitor name, we need to put in the competitor domain, as well as the persona job title. This means basically the person that we want to reach out to and also the company that we are selling for or our company. If you want the agent to monitor multiple competitors, you can also just copy this. And then what you can do is just replace these two here and then the agents will also monitor them. In this case, our company is called Slide and our competitor is Notion. So the competitor domain is notion.so and we are looking for the founder. In the end, we are looking for reviews and these people will then be looked up and their company and then we're looking for the founder of this company so we can directly reach out to that person. The next thing we have to decide then for the agent is how often we want this to run, right? So we put this that this runs every day, but you can also change this to three times a week or also once every hour, but we recommend around one to every three days. Going to the next note, the Google Sheet. So this is where you first of all have to connect your Google Sheet. So you have to go here, credential to connect with. This will be your Google Sheet and then you can also decide which sheet this should be in. I always recommend to then just test the steps, right? So here you can see in our Google Doc, we have this in our second row. So this is correctly transcribed. So here we have Notion, Notion, Founder and Slide. The next step is that we're going to use a tool called Zerper. So this will allow us to 
basically find the G2 page of that competitor. So what it basically does, it's going to do a Google search. As you can see here, we have G2 page off, and then we will put in the competitor name or the domain. And what you also have to do is you have to create a free account. You can do this completely for free of Serper, and then you can paste your API key here. On the input side, we have G2 page of Notion, right? So this is G2 page of the competitor name. And then the Serper is going to scroll the whole Google search. And here we then have the link which is the G2 page of our competitor. So we have the G2 page of the competitor now, but now we need to get this slug, right? So we're going here inside this. So this is basically um, a JavaScript. So it's just going to extract that. And then you will see the output here on the right side. The next tool in the workflow we're going to use is a tool called Piloter. So this will allow us to get the reviews of G2, right? You can also create an account completely for free and get your API key. So going into the note here, the only thing that you would have to do is then um, put the API key here. And this, what you can see here, is basically the slug from G2, right? So we need to give the slug from the G2 page to Piloter so it can basically scrape the page and constantly look for new reviews. The next node is again rather a formal one. So basically here we're going to split out the reviews, right? So we now have gathered all of the reviews from the G2 page from Notion. And now what we will have to do is we now need to split it so it's easily readable for the next steps. As you can see here, we have the text. We also have the reviewer, right? We have the link of that review. We have the name. We have the job title, the industry, and also the company size, which will later on help us to identify who that person is and at which company this person is actually working. The next note is a filter, which allows us to see which of these reviews actually have a reviewer name and also which of these reviews have a reviewer job titles. This is very important to have because we need this information to later on find the person's company and find the person in the first place. Basically, you have the reviewer name, right? So this comes from Piloter. This is the person that reviewed and then the job title. So this is mostly given on G2 and only if these two exist, we're going with these leads to the next step. You might rightfully ask yourself what this merge note is here. So what we're doing is that we are looking at the past reviews because this is an agent, right? So it runs on autopilot so that we deduplicate, meaning that we're not taking reviews which we already fed into our outbound machine. So the Google Sheet note here is basically checking the rows that are already in the sheet, and then it's going to merge what we found newly, right? So every time it runs new, there is new data coming in, and then it checks the old data that is already in the Google Sheet, and then it basically just deduplicates, and only the new rows are being sent on to the next steps. Our next step is now that we have the name of the person that reviewed, and also we have the job title, right? We're going to look for that person on LinkedIn. And for this, we're going to, again, use the same tool we used initially, which is called Serper. Going in the note, we will see that the only thing, again, that we need is here the API key. So just paste it in. You already have it from the previous step. And what we will also do is we're going to look for the lead on LinkedIn. So we're going to click here on site, linkedin.com slash IN means that we're looking for profiles only. And we're also going to put the reviewer name and also the job title. So this will quite accurately give us the LinkedIn URL of that person. Then again, we're going to use Piloter, right? So this allows us to then scrape the LinkedIn profile. What we want is that we get more information about that person and especially at the company the person is working in so that we can clearly identify who actually commented under this review or rather who wrote the review. We will then use Piloter again because this will allow us to scrape the LinkedIn profile that we just found because then we can see where that person is actually working and find out more about that company. Going in the note, the only thing that has to be put in is the API key, right? This is something that we already did previously, so just put it here again. And then we also need to put the LinkedIn profile URL that we previously found from Serper. Next step is, again, a Google Sheet one because now we need a new sheet. Looking here at our Google Sheet, we have the reviews, right? So this is basically giving us all of the data of the reviews that we have. So here you can see we have the name, we have the job title, we have the link, and uh, this will then allow us to look for the company that the person actually is coming from. So what you're gonna have to do is you have to connect your Google Sheets account, you have to um, show in which document and also in which sheet it is, and then we will see that we need to send in the review ID, the review date, and all of the data that we previously gathered through Piloter G2 scraping. We are also putting in the first name and the last name as well as the position name and the domain. And now we have the data of the actual last name because on G2 for anonymization, it's only the 
first letter of the last name, so this is very great to have. And now we also have the company name Scrape from LinkedIn in a very actual, also up-to-date way. And the next filter that we are setting is about seeing which of the leads that we just scraped does not have a company name because for the flow to work, we need to see where the person is actually working. So we're saying only if a company name from LinkedIn exists, then we're going on to the next step. Because now what we're trying to do is we're looking for the right person to reach out to because initially what we had here in the Google Sheet, right, we said the persona job type that we are targeting is founder. So now we're looking at the company name that we just extracted and found of a company or rather a person of a company that reviewed. And now we're going to use a tool called Better Contact for that. Better Contact is a waterfall enrichment tool and it aggregates over 20 contact data provider tools in one. And it only charges when the data is actually valid, right? So it uses tools like Bouncer and other email verification tools. And this will then allow you to find the email. But First of all, we're going to use their lead finder, which is basically based on LinkedIn. So it's directly connected and scrapes on demand. So this will allow us to get the fresh data and then see what we're going to find based on this company name, if we're going to find the founder, right? So this way you are not dependent on tools like Apollo.io, which usually give data which is rather stale and also outdated. We're also going to create a free account for better contact, also no credit card needed whatsoever, and then just copy paste the API key in the node and we will exactly see what we have to do here. API key belongs here. This is the value which you have to then replace. And then also what we need to do is we need to use the lead finder endpoint and our input is the company name, the company domain, as well as the job title that we are looking for, right? Which is the founder. We're also going to put enrich email address to true because we want to find the email address of the person if you want. And if you want to reach directly out to the person via cold calling, you can also enrich the phone number. The next module is the wait module because we now need to wait a bit. So we set the wait amount to five minutes because Better Contact is aggregating all of these tools. It requests all of these providers and also does the verification. It takes a little bit of time. So we're going to put the time interval to five minutes wait. After this wait time is over, the agent is going to the next node because now it's going to retrieve the data that Better Contact found. So here we can see that we are basically fetching the data now. Now we're getting the data, the one which we previously posted. Please put your API key again here. And this will then allow us to see the leads that Better Contact found from LinkedIn and also the email address that it found. We're putting a filter again, right? Because we can only reach out to those people where the email address is also found. Only if the contact email address is not empty, we will also reach out to that person because otherwise it's not possible, right? As it's possible that we're going to find multiple people, for example, if there are multiple co-founders, we're again going to split out the results, meaning all of the leads are being structured again. So it's not in one, but rather that each of the single leads has a structure of itself. Each of the leads is now being sent to the AI agent and what the AI agent is going to do, it's going to write a cold email. This is what I've talked about in the beginning. It's personalized, so it's not just blasting out a cold email. It's really looking at each of the different people and also what the review was about. Now we can reach out to them in a personalized way. Looking at the prompt, it might not be the best one because this is rather for demonstration purposes. Please adjust this for your own campaigns, for your own ICP and all of this. We're going to we will write a cold email message to reach out to a relevant lead, which belongs to a company, right? and they are currently using a competitor. So we're going to put the competitor name here and we will also show who we are. So which company we are working for or the company we are selling for. We now wanna get in touch with this person or rather with this company. And the idea is now that we are going to give the review to the GPT. We also now want to have the GPT categorize if this is positive or negative, right? So this can also be easily be seen on the rating, right? On the stars that uh, have been given by the lead. We do not only want to reach out to the person that gave a bad review, but also to the people that gave a good review. Because even if the person gave a good review, there might be something which we have to offer, which is better, which is better price. So we're still going to reach out to them and ask GPT to write a copy based on that. And if the review is negative, what we're going to do is we are going to get the pain point of that person and we're going to explain or we rather let the agent explain why our solution is better for that person right now. We're now going to send all of this gathered data, namely the person as well as the valid email address, as well as the personalized copy. So the thing that we want to write to the person to Gmail. And if you're using a tool like Instantly, Sales Handy, Smart Lead or Salesforce, so basically 
cold outreach tools which are designed specifically for that, you can also just replace the Gmail node. If you want to use Gmail, you can go in the node and of course the first thing you have to do is you have to connect your Gmail account to this node. The resource is a message, right, because we're going to send a message and then also the operation is sent, right, because we want to send out the email to that lead. Here what you have to do is you have to change this from a fixed expression to basically a variable, right? So here you will have to put in the valid email of the person that we just found, right? So in this case, we're looking for the founder and we just found the email through better contact. So here you will have to map that. The subject line is also something that we let the GPT write out. So this is here on the input side, you can just drag and drop it here. And then the message is basically the meat of our outreach, right? So this is where the personalization is happening and where we, based on the review, are tailoring our offer to that person. The last note of this workflow is the Google Sheet again. So we need a new sheet. I will show you in a second how we can set that up. But the first thing you have to do again is connecting your Google Sheet account. Now our Google Sheet, we have here the reached out leads. These are the people that our AI agent already reached out through Gmail or whatever you want to use, right? So there is other tools such as Instantly, Salesforce, Sales Handy, and Smart Lead. And then we will see here and have a nice overview with the copy, with the email that the agent used to reach out and pitch our offer. And after this whole process is done, as we discussed in the beginning, you can let it run as often as you want. We now went from an input of only the competitor name, the domain, and also the person you want to reach out to, as well as the company that we are working or selling for to a whole page of reviews, the person's name and also the company name that we found later on to basically a whole list of people that we reached out to with personalized and also relevant copy. And the output of this operation is basically this sheet. So you have the first name, the last name, the job title and the LinkedIn URL, as well as the company name of that person. And you can also see which email subject line as well as the message the agent used and of course the verified contact email address. The only thing that you have to do now is monitor your mailbox, see the replies coming in and then talk to these people, book a demo and in the end close them as a new customer. Now, if you use the system that I just showed you, you have a choice. You can let the agent cold email these leads, which is basically what we set up here, or you can let the agent cold call them. Cold calling is an amazing way to see instant results and sales, but most companies have an operational bottleneck with it. But honestly, cold calling is way more demanding than cold email, and traditionally, you also need SDRs to get even started with it. But if you click here to go check out the next video, you will be able to create an AI agent which is handling all of the lead generation as well as cold calling for you. And before you say, well, people know when they're getting called by a robot chat GPT voice. The results the system produces are actually insane and it's crazy what you can do these days with this technology. So if you want to grow your business faster and instead of relying on cold emailing these leads, I will see you in the next video.